I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be Attraction Doesn't Guarantee Chemistry. Well, I've got four different emails I'm going to go through with you today. And we're going to be talking about is the difference, obviously, between attraction and chemistry, and how just because you're sexually attracted to a woman and she's sexually attracted to you, that doesn't automatically guarantee that there's going to be chemistry. The very best relationships, the easy kind of relationships, the effortless kind of relationships happen when two people are not only physically attracted to one another, but they actually genuinely, sincerely enjoy hanging out, talking, they have similar interests, they're very enthusiastic to be there with one another, and things just flow naturally. And a big part of what I teach in these video newsletters is to help guys get to the place where they can be natural. And that only comes as a byproduct of being comfortable in your own skin, learning to love and accept yourself unconditionally, standing up for yourself, knowing what you want in life, and pursuing interests or a purpose or a mission, something that's emotionally compelling to you. Because at the end of the day, if you're not a happy person right now, and you think a relationship's gonna make you happy, what'll happen is, is after six months or a year after the honeymoon period wears off, what you're going to realize is you're still not happy as a human being. And so that's why it's best if you're not happy right now and you're single and you want to meet somebody is to work on creating a life and lifestyle that supports you doing the kinds of things that you love doing and doing it with the kind of people that you really want to do it with. So before we get into this first email, I've got a quote that I wrote that I want to share with you. And it says, chemistry happens as a byproduct of mutual physical attraction, similar goals and values, similar interests, enthusiasm for one another, and both people being ready, willing, and able to explore being together without holding back. In order for chemistry to grow, things must progress naturally and effortlessly. If interaction between one another happens in fits and starts, then doubt, fear, holding back, and challenges will quickly dissipate chemistry and attraction. A truly great relationship starts out with ease and effortlessness and only gets better with time. When things go sideways or don't work out, don't take it personally. Understand that learning to be yourself, accepting yourself, and loving without conditions or attachments is a process that is perfected through time and repetition. See every person who comes into your life as a gift and part of an unlimited supply of teachers who are divinely sent to help you perfect yourself. So, Because it's easy to get caught up when you meet someone, you have great chemistry, and it starts out being good, but a few weeks in, it starts to kind of die or fade away. Or initially, you meet a girl, and you can tell she's enthusiastically into you, and after a period of time, it seems like she's kind of looking for the exit. She's not as into you as she was. Her responses get shorter and shorter. And obviously something has happened to where it's not flowing and she's no longer feeling the vibe. So let's get into the first guy's email. He's got a good email here of how things started off pretty good with a girl and then he kind of fumbled the football and so he's asked me to critique how, how things happen. But what I like about what he did is that he met this girl just by, by going through his life, met her on a train, he had the guts to go sit down next to her, started asking her questions, and that's why it's great as far as when you meet a woman in public is to talk about things in your environment. Obviously, this particular case, she I looked to be like she was studying, so it's easy to go, hey, what are you studying when you sit down next to her? And a chemistry happens. If the attraction's there, it's really easy. It's a natural progression of things. And you'll see that he just really did a beautiful job of picking this girl up and getting her phone number, but that really is one of the easiest things. I know for a lot of guys they struggle to get past that, but that's only part of the battle because you've got to become good at striking up conversations because at the end of the day, you've heard me say it a number of times, attraction isn't a choice. It's either there or it's not. So he says, hey coach, I just wanted to say that you rule and I wanted to let you know some of the success that I'm having so far. I met a girl on a train and this was one of the best interactions I've had ever. I saw her and I sat beside her. I saw she was working on some schoolwork, so I asked what class that was for. We were talking about school and then she asked which station I was getting off at and it turned out that she was getting off there too. 
Isn't that nice how that just happens so easy and so effortlessly? You're literally energetically and vibrationally drawn to that person that she gets on the train the same time you do. You happen to notice her. She's getting off the same stop. So you've heard me say like attracts like and this is what I mean. Energetically, things just line up for you and they put people in your path that you can't help but meet. I mean she's literally right there. You got plenty of time to talk to her, strike up a conversation. You're not rushed. You're not in an elevator and you got like 30 seconds to create rapport and get a number before the door opens, there's no pressure in this kind of situation. These are the easiest ones to make go well. And so when I look at something like this, he was supposed to meet this girl. She was there exactly for him. Now it doesn't mean he's going to spend the rest of his life with her, although it's possible, but it just means this is how the universe works. This is how it brings you people, places, and things to bring you exactly what you need in the moment to help you grow in the fullness of who you're supposed to be. And if you're looking to have a really great relationship with somebody, it's like every mistake, every failure, everything that doesn't work out, you got to understand they have a gift for you and you have a gift for them. And that interaction is going to last however long it's going to last, even if you screw it up. There's six and a half billion people on this planet and half of them are women. You can never talk to and interact with every attractive woman on this planet. So the numbers are definitely in your favor, but the key is to keep circulating and not get all hung up on one girl if it doesn't work out because it, it, it inhibits you from continuing to circulate through life and continuing to meet other people when you worry about what was or what didn't work out or what didn't go well. So he says, I then told her that we should hang out and she gave me her number and I gave her mine. I waited a week till I texted her for a date and we did. It was great. We ate tacos and we hung out. Next week for the second date, I invited her to come over to my place and she came and we made lunch together. She complimented me too and she told her family how she met a really hot guy on the train and we also made out. That's good. Everything's naturally evolving, naturally flowing. She's feeling a little more comfortable with you and she really likes you. So when you invite her over, it's just an easy, natural, effortless progression of things. She was on top of me and she had her hands on my crotch when I was doing the dishes and she was even biting my ears. Sounds like she was ready to rock on your second date, bro. Hang out, have fun, hook up. And see what happens is she's naturally physically attracted to you and she feels at ease being with you and she can tell that you like her and you handled yourself very confidently. You met on a train. That's, that's romantic when you think about it. That's the kind of way that women would love to meet a guy. It just kind of happens. So in their mind, this is fate. This is supposed to be. And as long as you continue to act naturally and let things evolve slowly over time, it'll be pretty easy. It's just like Adam Carolla said in the quote I, I think I shared it in my book as well, was that when a woman likes you, the doors start opening and all you literally have to do is to walk through them. I mean, she's got her hands all over you and it's pretty easy to make things go to a successful conclusion in the bedroom. If you know what you're doing, if you've rehearsed this several times. He said she then said that she didn't just have sex with anyone because she has feelings and not some whore and she didn't want to get hurt. So she's basically saying, like you probably heard me say in videos, is women want to feel that they're more special than all the other girls that you're meeting because it has to mean something to you and she wants it to mean something to her and that's what she's communicating. She's saying, hey, I don't share myself with just anyone but at the end of the day, she's feeling those emotions and so that's... You'll hear that a lot. Most women will actually say something along those lines that she does. I don't just. I don't want you to think that I do this all the time. In other words, what she's really trying to communicate to you is, hey, you're really making me feel special, and most guys don't have this effect on me. So it's a compliment to you in that moment. He says, I just smiled and replied back, saying, "Stick around a little longer, and you will find out." I would have, I would have just said something reciprocative of you know I don't sleep around with just anybody either I think you're pretty amazing I think you're pretty special and I'm really digging the vibe that we're feeling right now and it's because it's obvious it's easy and that's gonna make her smile and you keep escalating things the key is about maintaining the level of safety and comfort and validating what she just said to you but the worst thing you can do is kind of act cold and indifferent like oh you're just another piece of ass you soon, as soon as you start to act that way or she starts to get that impression 
the sexual chemistry will fucking evaporate instantly and she'll usually want to leave or things will go downhill from there very quickly because instead of making her feel special, you made her feel like she's just another notch in your bedpost. So it's important to handle yourself appropriately in this particular moment and make her feel special when she says something like that. And say and just reiterate to her, it's like, yeah, I think you're pretty amazing. It's really special how we met on the train. I don't believe in accidents. I believe that we were supposed to meet. And the fact that you're here right now, it's just I feel amazing when I'm with you. And not only are you beautiful, bring those beautiful lips over here and kiss me some more. And you just naturally escalate things. So he says, I didn't think we'd be making out the way we did, so I was satisfied with how the date went. I'd rate it at 75%. He says, I'm shitting myself giving that high of a rate. Please do let me know. Well, she's definitely into you in that particular moment. You'd done everything right up until that point. Other than what you said to her, that wasn't really the best response. But you're learning and you've done great so far. And that's the whole purpose of this interaction. It doesn't mean you're going to spend the rest of your life with this girl. It just means that this is how chemistry naturally evolves. He says, she later texted me saying that she felt really fluttery and she really likes me. And I texted her the next day saying, me too. Well, what I would have done is saying, yeah, I really feel the same way and I can't wait to see you again. When are you free to get together next? That's what you should have done in that particular moment because she's really digging you. She's reaching out to you to tell you that she had a great time and then you should get back to her and let her know that you had a great time and make the next date. So he says, I wait another week to plan the next date. That's, that's a mistake. Tells me you don't know the book very well. Remember, when a woman reaches out to you, assume she wants to see you and make the next date. She's basically calling and saying, I feel really special about you and I'm really liking how things are going. And you're like, I do too. And then you wait a week to call her. Now she thinks, oh, he's just playing games with me. And if a woman gets the impression that you're just playing games with you, that'll evaporate the sexual attraction as well. He says, this is her birthday week, so I definitely wanted to hang out again. And stupid me completely forgot when on the weekend it was. Women pay attention to that stuff. He says, so I called her first and she didn't answer. So I texted her, silly me, I forgot when your birthday was. And she texted saying, I'm horrible at catching, horrible at catching your calls. I was brushing my teeth. It's on Saturday. What's up? I texted saying, we need to party it up. She texted saying, I know I have a lot of things to do for this weekend, but I want to hang out at some point. So I asked her, what are her plans for the weekend? Wrong, wrong. I would have just said, instead of saying we need to party up, I would have said, I really want to see you. When are you free to get together? And she says, oh, well, you know, I'm celebrating my birthday with my friends and family all weekend. It's like, great. Well, when, when are you free so you and I can get together and we can have our own celebration? I'd really love to see you. Just like that. That reiterates that you think of her Spe as a special kind of girl, a unique kind of woman, the kind of woman that you don't meet every day. And that validates her feelings of thinking that same way about you. It's real important how you handle yourself in this texting in these moments because if you come off too cold and too indifferent, you're gonna, like I said, you'll make her feel like you're just trying to get in her pants and she's just another lady. And when a woman feels like that, she's out of there. You blew it. Doesn't take much. One or two bad texts and that's it. You're done. Put a fork in you, bro. On to the next. So he says, so I asked what her plans for the weekend and come to think of it, I wish I didn't send that text. I should have just said, when, are you, when will you be free? Yep. He says, well, she told me all her plans and said maybe Sunday. And I texted her the next day, sweet, your place. She said, not unless you want my dad to kill you. And I said, I'll pick you up from the station near her place at 12. And she said, noon won't work. I don't know how the weekend is going. See, that's the importance of saying, I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together? And then you make a date, hang out, have fun, and hook up. I said, oh, man, I end the conversation there. I cannot stand texting people. About 9 p.m. on Saturday night, I called her and left a message saying, hey, it's me. Happy birthday. I hope you had a good one. You're more than welcome to join me at church and check out what it's like. Or we can hang out after Fumbling the football, dude. You're falling all over yourself here. Call me soon. I want to meet up again. She still hasn't said anything. After Sunday, 
She doesn't say anything. Do I wait till next week to plan another date or do I let it go until the next one? After the second date, my attraction for her grew a bit more and she was into me too. So it obviously... So she's turning 22 and I'm 18. I try my best to fight myself from being overly attached by working on music for my album. So I'm also fighting my inner insecurity which keeps telling me it won't work. I know that's a bitch when you're trying to overcome it, but at least you're doing it at 18 years old, dude. I, it wasn't. I was about 30 years old when I figured this fucking shit out. It's like I have a lot of missed opportunities. So he says this is a show coming up for my band, and I know there'll be plenty of really hot girls there. So I'm looking forward to meet more girls. I'm also keeping myself busy by pursuing my goal to become a licensed plumber and just focusing on bettering my life. My question is, how would you critique my performance and how can I fine tune it more? Well, I've kind of gone through that already. But what I will say is, if you haven't heard from her in a week, give her another call or send her a text just saying, hey, I'd love to see you when you free date together and then make a date. Maybe you can have her come over to your place again. Or maybe you can meet up somewhere and, and have some fun. But if she just ignores you then, you know you kind of fumbled the football. And like I said, it doesn't take much to screw up good chemistry where she starts to think, this guy is kind of weird, he doesn't know what he's doing. And he didn't make her make her feel special. Like I said, the anticipation and attraction can really evaporate really quickly if you don't handle things. But you did most things right. You were doing okay up until the birthday situation. And it's like you kind of went back to your old way, old ways because everything up until that point, making your first date, your second date, flowed naturally. And you should have just kept doing what you were doing. But instead, you started to really like this girl and you started to really care about her. And then you kind of went back to your old bad ways and habits and fumbled the football. But that's okay. I mean, you're fucking 18, dude. So let's get into the third guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, I love your stuff. You're truly a godsend. Here's my situation. I've been talking to a girl that I really adore for about six months now. Things escalated gradually, but rather quickly. We were both cool with each other's families, both heavily involved in each other's lives, and both slept at each other's house from time to time. Just recently, I've been in a financial slump as we were both currently unemployed. Although I do have my side jobs that I do, it just hasn't been enough lately and it's probably the root of our problems indirectly. Yeah, it's hard when you're not making money and you're, you don't know where your next paycheck is coming from. You're working a bunch of odd jobs. You're in between jobs because you worry about that. Your money's tight. You, you're watching how much you're spending and it's hard as a man to feel successful as a man and want and good enough about yourself to go out on a date when you're broke as a joke. So he says, as a result of being low on cash, I take odd jobs and I do what I can to make some money until I can get more consistent full-time gig. About a month ago, I regrettably lied to her about some minor details about a job I took because of my own financial insecurities at the time and she caught me in a few stupid white lies. It's a bad way to go, dude. That's not going to help a woman trust your masculine core. So he says, literally just a few mistakes I made by lying about what I did that day for work and who I did it with, in her mind, became generalized as I always lie to her. Remember, women are thinking along the lines of, is this a good guy for me? When you start lying about all kinds of little things like that and she catches you in those lies, she wonders what else you're lying to her about. This couple with an argument she had with her sister one day, briefly, briefly what happened was we were renovating her closet and so we took all of her clothes out of the closet and put them in her sister's bedroom while we did this. Well, while I'm working in the closet, I hear an argument break out and she comes back in her room with a pile of clothes and tells me to go back and bring the clothes into her room. And she has a lot of clothes. So I said, hold on, let's just think about this, seeing as how there's no room in the room with all the wet paint. So she took this as me not standing up for her and eventually now I seem to be losing her trust. We have, we ha we've had the talk and although we both know what we are to each other, we agreed to not make it known publicly until we get to where we want to be financially and career wise. See, for six months you've been dating this girl and she doesn't even want anybody to know that you guys are boyfriend and girlfriend. That tells me that things are not being handled properly in the courtship. This woman's not in love with you. Although she expects exclusivity from me and I do from her based on things that have happened like phone calls and texts from other people. So lately she's been on her phone nonstop and always preoccupied. So the other day I looked at her damn phone and I seen at least three conversations with three different dudes, one of which 
she was telling, all I want for my birthday is to sleep next to you as her birthday's coming up with a few weeks' time. When I confronted her, I was pretty calm about it, but she said that she was saying that's brought on by her not trusting me and that they were all done behind a phone and that she can end it all in a heartbeat and it all depends upon me. So this tells me that she doesn't feel safe and comfortable being exclusive with you and she's lining up a replacement and obviously she's blaming the fact that she can't trust you which is obviously true but it's also not cool that she's hanging out with you and hooking up with you while she's lining up some other dude. That is a major red flag there. He says, now coach, what do you think I should do is I really love her and I want to be with her but I'm not convinced that texting has stopped. It probably hasn't. Even worse, maybe she has hung out with this other guy. Probably. And I know I need to get my job situation fixed so I can have some ground to stand on. But in the meantime, what do I do? She tests a lot. Should I back off even though we're already in a relationship but there isn't a label? I'd have to say you're not in a relationship, dude. She's just somebody you're kind of casually hooking up with and dating. And she's young. She's still living in her parents' house. So she's probably exploring to see what she can get and what else is out there. He says, I'm kind of in a very stressful place and it's affected me very negatively. Like I said, I would, if I were you, I'd start dating other women because it's obvious that this girl is dating other dudes behind your back and then blowing sunshine up your ass about what's really going on. And what I would do is I would get heavily involved in reading my book and learning what's in there so you can start applying what I teach because you're still obviously making a lot of, of mistakes in your courtship here. And, because after six months, the girl should be head over heels in love with you. And if she was head over heels in love with you, she wouldn't want to date any other guys. So let's get into the next email. And this one is from a woman who's into women. She says, Corey, I love your emails and they're usually right on point. I noticed lately that you started to refer to men and women who are dating women. Which is interesting because I came across your information while I was at a lesbian party. You certainly have a whole market that really hasn't been fully explored by quality coaches and I'd like to see more work coming from you on that end. Actually, I do coach quite a few women that are lesbians and one of the biggest things that the mistakes that, that they – is not knowing the difference of what role they should play, whether the feminine role or the masculine role and a lot of them – I'd say the majority of them that contact me basically feel like they're men in women's bodies and so they tend to be more of a masculine essence. But where they run into problems is setting dates and being direct and in essence doing all the things that masculine energy does that you hear me talk about when I'm usually advising men. And so because they tend to like women that are very feminine, girly type of women. And the same thing happens when a woman who is natural masculine essence gets together with a woman who is a more feminine essence and then she starts acting indecisive or wanting the feminine woman to make a decision, things usually start going sideways then. She says, most women who date women have not been socialized to attract and date women. As a result, a lot of women settle. In addition, there's a well-documented issue in lesbian dating. Women are afraid to approach other women. The only critique I would have is your language choice. Well, if you don't like how I talk, I really don't give a fuck because you don't know me and you don't have any right to tell me or dictate to me or assume that I should change who I am or act a certain way. I'm going to be 44 in a few months. I'm an adult and I use adult language discussing adult subjects. And at the end of the day, if you don't like how I talk, you are free to follow somebody else. And I would prefer that you follow somebody else if you have a problem with the way I am because I'm not going to change. I've been this way my whole life. My friends talk this way. The women that I date talk this way. My family talks this way. And I'm not going to change. I don't want to change because I like using more colorful Metaphors. The word fuck is one of my favorite words. And if you, it offends you or you have a problem with it, I'm probably not the right guy to help you. I'm not politically correct. And at the end of the day, someone told you that certain words were off limits and you shouldn't use them out of decency or BS or whatever. And you were silly enough to believe them. And at the end of the day, a word only has the meaning that you give it. And if you have a problem with the words I use, I really don't give a fuck. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. So she says the role of the alpha or the man is more of an energy or a projection energy, confidence and purpose as you say and it requires a sense of knowing thyself and what, what you want and what you expect from others. No one has really developed an inclusive general neutral turn to this state of being. 
Nonetheless, I think your holistic pro- approach is certainly the kind of platform which can be a little more inclusive. I mean, at the end of the day, you've probably heard me say numerous times that an understanding of masculine and feminine energy is essential to having a good quality relationship, whether you're a heter- heterosexual relationship or you're two women in a relationship, even even gay relationships where there's two dudes you're dating. There's usually a more masculine one and a more feminine one. So let's get into the fourth email. This guy says, hey coach, I wish I had found your YouTube videos a few weeks ago. I'm 29 and currently dating a 31 year old woman who just came out of a three year relationship in June. I work weird hours as a research biologist and working, I'm working on a set, second Bachelor of Arts degree. She also works full time and recently started her master's program. And I meet her in an online dating site and have been on six dates. After reading your book and videos, I really do think I was fucking myself from the back without even knowing it. No doubt, I like this woman, but I foolishly and naively gave my power away just a few dates by contacting her the same day we had a date to say I had a great night with you. And in some occasions, she took her time, one or two hours or the next day, to get back to me. So he says... I would even text her when she has yet to reply and return my text call. So in other words, you didn't wait for her to get back to you. That expresses weakness and expresses neediness. He says, I was also taking things slowly by bullshitting myself into doing what friends do. No kiss, no peck in the cheek, hug or touch on first or second, third and fourth dates. I was basically doing what friends do, sending flowers to her work, lunches, movies, dinners. I'm hitting myself now knowing that all these while I was setting up recipes as guaranteed for failure and rejection. I think I shoved myself in a friend zone and she's now cold, never turns my phone call and doesn't initiate contact and finally playing busy flaky. We kiss on the fifth date, held hands and kissed some more on the sixth date. Before the seventh date, I was frustrated that I took to the web. So I took to the web and then that's where I found your book and I read it all on Sunday a few weeks ago. I didn't contact her for two days and then she wrote me a good morning text and I didn't reply until 6 p.m. And then she wrote back two hours later. Given that you said to only use the phone for setting up dates, I invited her to my house last night but she declined saying she would prefer to meet somewhere other than any of our houses. And the well again, this is something that you escalate slowly into. And if you've been hanging out and really haven't been kissing or doing much, in public acting like a friend then you invite her over it's kind of like okay now i'm expecting to get laid here and it's it's not a natural progression it's not flowing so he says in the end we had dinner outside but this time i applied your principles by acting a little indifferent having her talk more and making my sexual intents known by holding and smooching her hand her arms her back her thigh and kissed her often as i could all while driving and on the red light or I guess when he was parked at red lights. He says, was my, was my sudden change a good thing? Well, at least you started acting like a man. That's the important thing. And at the end of the day, even if you screwed up with this girl, who cares? You got to look at it, like I said in the quote. Each person that you encounter, they're there to be a teacher. They're there to help you get it right. And ultimately, if you're looking for a really great relationship, each girl like this that you screw up with, even though all these screw ups, you had six or seven dates with her, she's still going out with you and you're still able to escalate things when you mostly acted like a friend for the first five or six dates. So he says, while we were waiting for the check, I asked her to take a walk with me and she agreed, although she was wearing high heels. I told her that we could go to her house and get flats if she wanted and she gave in, but when we left the restaurant, she decided to walk in her heels and we didn't walk that long until we found a bench and sat by the sea harbor. There we talked, we cuddled, we hailed hands, etc. And even though she was licking her lips and touching her hair, etc. and looking at my lips, I felt that she was still holding back somehow. And it's obvious that the girl liked you. I mean, she went out on all these dates and put up with you acting like the gay male girlfriend. And then now you start acting like a man. And so she's obviously physically attracted to you. So that's the benefit. You, get, you start going out with a girl that's got a really high attraction level for you. You can still grew up, screw up quite a bit and she'll still give you a shot. 
He says the weather that evening was chilly and she was shaking. I asked her if she wanted to go. And on our previous date, she would want to go home immediately after dinner using, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I got a school project the next day or work schedule. And she said no, that we can stay. Well, that's a good sign because she was hoping that things would escalate. He said, we stayed for another 20 minutes. I said, let's go home. And on our way home, I held her hands for the first time and she began to rub my hand. We would kiss and randomly I would catch her staring at me, vice versa, in which she would say, what jokingly? See, it's obviously the chemistry's there. You're, you know, you see her staring at you and, and, and you're like, what? It's good. It means she's, she's checking you out. She's liking you. She's feeling her attraction for you. And it's like despite all these fuck-ups, she's still into you. He says – and, and this is like – women like this really can help you learn. It's like one of the women that I wrote about in my book, she really liked me. I mean she had like 80 percent interest from the get-go. And I backed off enough. It's like even though I screwed up so much over the course of a year and a half, she had a really high attraction level. And that's what's nice about women like that is even though you're screwing up a lot, you're still doing a lot of things right. And so it's like the attraction. You're kind of like a yo-yo where attraction goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down. And when you really dig a girl like that and she still sticks around despite all the mistakes that you're making, those are the kind of women that you really learn a lot from. They can really teach you a lot and help you get it right with the next one because the girlfriend that I dated after her, it was totally easy and effortless from the moment that we met. It was just so fucking easy and magical. And it's like once you get to that place and you learn how it is, it's like riding a bike. It's like once you learn how to ride a bike, it's pretty easy after that. So he says, on two occasions at a red light, I grabbed her and I kissed her and I took her home without talking or seeing her again on our prior dates. And I've had, I have not written or called her after the date. My question is, how can I get my power back, get her to submit, get her to open up emotionally by sharing? She talks but never shares deep personal issues. Well, it's just a matter of time. You got to be patient with her. He says, how do I get her to come to my house for sex? I stupidly expressed that I like her a lot of times without her ever saying she liked me too, except once. How can I reverse the trend? I'm fucking screwed. <laughs> Signed the clueless, naive, and needy bitch. <laughs> well, at least you admit you and you realize you made mistakes. But like I said, it you know I would call her after a week or so and invite her out for a date, go to dinner somewhere, and then have a bottle of champagne in your fridge and some glass champagne flutes so you can easily say, hey, why don't we get out here and go back to my place? Because what happens is when you guys are kissing each other and you're all over each other and there's a lot of heavy petting going on, you can simply say, hey, why don't we go back to my place? And, or you could say it like this, would you like to come back to my place and have a glass of champagne with me? It's really simple. She can say yes or she can say no and you can take her home. Then you just know that she's not ready. And like I said, in this particular case, you're working to kind of get her back to that place that she was in the beginning, but even you know, if you don't hear from her again, then you know that you screwed up with her completely. But hey, dude, pat yourself on the back. I mean, this is great. You made a lot of progress with this girl, even though you screwed up a lot in the beginning. And that's what happens. That's why you got to continue to circulate. That's why you got to continue to get out there and not get attached to the fact that it didn't work out with one particular girl, because then it just the next girl that you come across, you won't take five or six six dates to start kissing her and making a move on her. Physically, and like I said, time and repetition. Repetition is the mother of skill. Excellence is not a singular act, it's a habit. You are what you do repeatedly, and this is how you get better. You learn from your mistakes, you learn through your mistakes. And that's why I go through all these emails and these video newsletters because every guy that's watching this, whether they're really advanced or they're just beginning, can learn something from this because it's like it's almost as if they had these particular experiences themselves without having to go through the rejection because they learn from your mistakes and what you did right and what you did wrong. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone coaching session. And you can do that by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen and follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon. 